You're about to discover the most important watch outs and things you need to know if you're interested in or considering cruising with Silver Sea Expedition Cruises. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. I'm going to explore Silver Sea Expedition Cruises. First of all, who or what exactly is Silver Sea Expedition Cruises? Well, Silver Sea has two parts. They have the classic cruising fleet and they have the expedition fleet. Silver Sea itself is part of the Royal Caribbean Group. So Royal Caribbean Group has Royal Caribbean Line, which is their sort of more mass market line. They have Celebrity, which is their premium line. They have Azamara, which is their small ship destination line. And they have Silver Sea, which is their luxury and expedition cruise line within the overall group. They have a classic fleet which has ships up to around about 600 guests and then they have the expedition fleet which is constantly growing and expanding. So they have such ships as the Silver Cloud which I'm on now, they have the Silver Explorer which I've been on, they also have the Silver Galapagos and they'll soon add to that the Silver Origin and the Galapagos. They have Silver Discoverer and they're constantly converting and bringing other ships onto their expedition fleet because it's constantly growing. In terms of where they cover in terms of expeditions, they cover the Galapagos obviously, they cover Antarctica, they cover the Arctic. In between those periods they cover other parts of the world, so they'll cover Africa, they'll do Russia, Australia, New Zealand, the South Pacific, South America. The next key watch charts are around what they do better than other expedition brands and what they do the same or worse than other expedition brands. So let's start by taking a look at what I think they do really well or do better. First of all, what they do phenomenally well is luxury expedition cruising. So they have very luxurious ships which really are five star premium ships with very plush interiors butler service in every single suite, they have lots of attention to detail, incredible food, very high level of service, incredibly high passenger to crew ratio and all the trimmings you'd expect of a luxury brand with its champagne, caviar. So they're basically taking their classic luxury service and features and put that into their expedition ships and product. They also offer a surprisingly large amount of choice on board their expedition ships. So for example, on the Silver Cloud, there are four dining options. You have the main restaurant, you've got La Terrazza, which is a buffet for breakfast and lunch, and then turns into an Italian restaurant. You have La Dame, which is a very premium, epicurean dining experience. And then you have the grill, which is an outdoor area, which for lunchtime will serve things like burgers and hot dogs, and at night has the Silver Sea signature hot rocks. They also have a wide range of bars. So for example again on the Silver Cloud you've got the grill bar outside, Dolce Vita, you have the Panorama Lounge. Then again you have facilities like a fitness centre, a spa, a guest laundry, a library, an observation lounge. So again lots of facilities and lots of choice. Surprisingly large amount for a relatively small ship. One of the things that they do phenomenally well and they put a huge amount of resource against is the expedition team. Expedition cruisers will have some kind of expedition team. On Silver Sea it's a very big team. I'll give you an example on Silver Cloud there were 28 people in the expedition team. So you have the expedition leader, then you have a wide range of experts, some historians, botanists, some experts in wildlife, birds. So a huge range of expertise and they will run briefings before you do landings, they'll do recaps where they'll talk about what you've seen and they'll do various lectures across the course of the expedition. One of them will then drive the Zodiac every day so as you move around the different Zodiacs you have different experts with you all the time. So the expedition team I would say is definitely top-notch. A fantastic innovation on Silver Sea Expedition is the photo studio. They have a photographer and in some cases a photographer and a videographer. So the videographer goes out on all the expeditions, captures unique footage on what you've seen and creates a video at the end which you can then buy. What the photographer does is help people improve their photographic skills. So in the photo studio there's a huge amount of computers, so both for Mac and PC users. On there are loaded programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, so when you've been out on an excursion you can go in there, you can use the facilities to edit, crop, improve your photos. For a fee you can then print those out. Use of the equipment is totally within your fare. Then what the photographer does is they will also run a series of courses, so a couple of them are complementary courses. They then will run a series of paid for courses on everything from how to shoot on manual, how to use things like Lightroom, you could chat about photographs, you could get tips and advice 
and I think that's a huge huge big plus and definitely something that they do phenomenally well. So what do Silver Sea Expeditions do kind of the same as other expedition brands? And one of the things that does pretty much the same is the fares are largely all-inclusive even on a more basic line. The fares because of the nature of expeditions tend to be relatively all-inclusive. So then your Silver Sea Expedition fare, obviously you're going to get your accommodation, you're going to get all of your food, and you're going to get your gratuities and some limited Wi-Fi. But what's very important is all your excursions, of course, are included. So all your Zodiac trips, all your landings. Now that's fairly consistent across expedition brands, no matter what level they are. They do have kayaks on board which are included so you don't pay to use the kayak. Some other expedition brands do have kayaks but there's fees associated with that. The things that are not included on Silver Sea Expeditions are if you want to go and have some spa treatments. If you want to eat in La Dame which is their very premium offering. If you use laundry and it's not included within your fare, it is included in some fares. And of course if you do things like buy things in the boutique. Basic Wi-Fi is included. It's not a very high allowance, so if you want something faster, you want to be connected all the time, there is a fee to get a better internet package. The other thing that they do is they do require you to bring your own gear. There is some limited stuff on board in terms of boots, but you do have to buy or rent your own gear. And of course, on expeditions, particularly in the Arctic and Antarctica, there's a lot of gear that you need to bring. Now, what Silver Sea do, like many of the more premium expedition lines is they have relationships with different providers. So in Silver Sea's case, it's with a company called Ship to Shore Traveller, and they have a very specific Silver Sea section within that where you can go in and you can order your gear, and then that actually gets delivered to the ship. Now you can either rent it or buy it. The other thing that Silver Sea do, which is again pretty consistent across expedition brands, is they give you a parka. And expedition cruise lines normally give this to their passengers because it helps you stand out when you're on land. They also give you a reusable water bottle and they give you a backpack as well. One thing that is very similar is the format. So the format of expedition cruising is fairly consistent and what that tends to be is there is three basic things that happen. So one, there'll be some cruising around in the ship where you'll go through different sites or you might be wildlife spotting. The second thing is zodiac tours. Again looking at scenery or up close to glaciers or you'll go and check out wildlife. And the third is landings where you go on the zodiacs, you'll land in certain areas and you'll then go on hikes to look at wildlife or scenery or some historic aspects. So the format of expedition cruising is very similar no matter who you go with. You have briefing sessions, you have zodiac tours or landings, and then you have recap briefings afterwards. So the format and structure is pretty similar. So who, in my view, is Silver Sea Expeditions best suited for? Well, first of all, you need to be relatively affluent because it is a premium luxury experience. So the fares are on the higher side versus more basic expedition cruise lines. You'll find most of the passengers tend to be in their 50s, 60s and 70s. Many of them are retired or professional people. People will generally be quite active and fit. You have to be quite fit to go on many of the expedition cruises. So for example, both in the Arctic and Antarctica, you have to be getting on and off of zodiacs. You're going to be going on hikes up some very big hills and mountains. You're going to be going on rough terrain. So you do need to be pretty fit and active. There is some capacity for people with mobility issues. There are some accessible cabins, but very important if you do have accessibility issues, have a discussion with Silver Sea. Now, of course, you'll find in some of the areas, particularly Antarctica, you will find a much bigger spread because there are younger people who, again, have the money or resources or just really want to do it and will go. So, for example, we had some people in their late 20s who were on their honeymoon because this was the one thing they wanted to do. The expeditions are managed and run in English. However, on the various expeditions I've been on, there have been language groupings. They've normally come as a group. So there was, for example, on the cruise I've just done, there was quite a big Russian group and they had brought a Russian translator along. If you want to come and do it in another language, you need to come as part of a group. The groups are organizing the translations rather than the Silver Sea itself. If you're a solo traveler, the good news is that Silver Sea do various promotions on certain expeditions across the year. So if you take a look at their website under the offer section, there's normally a section for single solo travelers. Sometimes there will be no surcharge, there may be a 15% char surcharge or 25% surcharge, and you'll find quite a lot of solo travelers 
than on those cruises. So I was on this particular cruise as a solo traveler, but certainly as a solo traveler, it was very sociable and very easy to mix with people. And it was great that they do have those deals for solo travelers. Silver Sea Expeditions is a great product. It's a premium product, it's a pretty expensive product, but there's a lot put into it. So you have a huge expedition team, you travel with luxury, with butlers, and all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a premium luxury experience. There's a number of things that they do really well, which is that premium experience. I think the expedition team is phenomenal. That whole Photoshop is great. And then the other things they do are fairly similar. So the format the structure is fairly similar. I'd love it if you watch many more of my Tips for Travelers videos. They're designed to help you make much more of your very precious travel time and money, whether you're on land, at sea, or on the rivers of the world.